They've been making cars here at the Cowley plant for over a hundred years. But more importantly than that, 60 years ago in 1959, a car was born here that changed the world and became a, not just a style icon, but a motorsport hero. And a thing that Mick Jagger wanted to drive and Steve McQueen and Twiggy and the Beatles. It was of course, it was the Mini. This is Cowley. The Mini was such an important car. It was a TARDIS, a small car with tons of space, packaged an engine in a way no one had ever done before. It was amazing at rallying. The other thing it was, it was affordable and it came at a time when there was an oil crisis. There'd been bubble cars up until this point which were a bit too weird. The Mini was cool. The Mini was different. It grew a legion of followers and made millions of memories for us and your parents and our parents' parents. That's how important the Mini is. It's taken all that time though before we can walk in that door and see the new full, first fully electric production Mini. And that's precisely what I'm gonna do because I can't wait. And because I can't wait, I'm gonna use my legs to walk myself in. That's what I'm gonna do. Bearing in mind, this car's had over 22,000 pre-orders. We first saw the concept of this in 2017. Now we're gonna see the real thing. Back in 2001, Mini was reborn when it got bought by the BMW Group. Doesn't feel like that long ago, 2001, and that's when they became the Mini One, as it was known as, which is the three-door hatch shape. This is now in its fourth incarnation, but it's the familiar new Mini. We still call it the new Mini. The old Mini ended production in the 1990s. This car is the first full production Mini. There has been electric Minis in the past, but they weren't mass produced. So what can I tell you about this? Well, first and foremost, it's very familiar. It is a mini body shell. It's the exact same floor pan and body shell that you get from a combustion mini. They make a new mini here in Cowley every 67 seconds. They're gonna be make this on that production line at the same time as the piston mini so they can adapt to market changes and, and trends. So if more people order an electric mini, it's fine. If less people order it, it's no problem. They are all gonna be made in the UK. How can you tell this is an electric mini? Well. There's a couple of quite obvious points. Let's look at the front end first. How do you know this is an electric Mini? Well, this is the electric Mini logo, this circular logo, and this color, it's called Energetic Yellow, I believe, and this you can see dotted around the car, and that is the standard color. This is a, a Mini grill that's got a fill-in panel that we see on a lot of cars like the Hyundai Ioniq, that kind of thing. There is actually an air inlet there, and the bonnet on this car is a Cooper S bonnet. So that's the inlet which you normally use for the turbochargers on the Cooper S. It's actually filled in on this car, it's, it's not required. And there's a lovely bonnet bulge at the top. Um, but this is functional and that is functional. And this front bumper actually, with this little lip, is specifically Mini Electric to maximise aerodynamics. What Mini's done is it's realised in a completely different way to the BMW i range is that a lot of owners want electric cars that just look familiar. So the same way that the e-Golf e exists, the e208, all of those kinds of cars, the adaptations of existing familiar combustion engine cars. If you want to, as a no-cost option, you can order this car and you can blank out the yellow. So this could just be grey. You can get rid of the yellow mirror cappings, which is an electric E function, and you can actually put conventional Mini Cooper S wheels on it. These are called Corona uh, wheels, this style. Very unusual, sort of asymmetric looking thing. These were on the concept car, um, and everybody seemed to like them, including me. So they stay. They, they're efficient for aerodynamics, which is why you've got these fill-in panels. They're very neat, they're 17-inch, so they're not massive, um, so there'll still be a good ride. They haven't talked much about the suspension of this car, but they reckon it's about Cooper-esque levels. The John Cooper Works is like the most hardcore Mini, and that's a proper bone shaker, so it won't be that hard. It'll be softer than that. If you don't like these, and you want it to look more like a conventional Mini, you can just put conventional Mini alloys on. It's a no-cost extra. If I look a bit strange to you, it's aside from the jumper, it's because there's some studio lighting. We've just had a presentation from um, the head of BMW Group um, and the head of design for the Mini to learn a bit more, which is why I've taken some notes. 
This is classed as the F56 body shape. So like I said before, this Mini body floor pan is identical to the piston Mini that we're all familiar with. The couple of little changes, obviously I've seen, shown you the grille, the bonnets from the Cooper S. You're probably wondering what's under the bonnet. Well, it's a 135 kilowatt motor, front wheel drive, of course. Uh, that's from the BMW i3 directly. And then there's a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery pack made of 12 modules in a T-shape down the transmission tunnel and under the back seat. Now, that does use the same cells as the BMW i3, apparently. A range, 144 miles WLTP. This is where you feed it. So again, conventional position of where you fill it with uh, petrol. This is an embossed E logo, press it. There isn't any sign of illumination, which is a bit annoying because at night it does get a bit dingy in there. You've probably experienced it. I have with the E-Golf, for example. You have to use your phone torch. There's your CCS, DC, 50 kilowatt speed, um, 35 minutes, zero to 80%. You can order this with a white or black two-tone roof. That's kind of standard. And they're also saying with electric models, you can have metallic at no cost extra. Okay, let's get on to price. They're pricing this car quite aggressively. They're pricing it cheaper than the petrol equivalent. So the starting price for the Mini Electric is 24,400, including the government grant. That is less than the current Mini Cooper S. What's good about that also is there are three different stages of uh, luxury comfort levels, which I'll talk about in a bit. You don't buy a Mini for boot space, that is a fact. There is a false floor. And under the false floor is where the Mini is going to supply you with a three pin plug charger. Uh, and also there's a type two connector for on the hop as well. This is the Mini dedicated wall box if you like a bit of style and you don't want to hide yours behind a hedge. Um, with one of these 7.4 kilowatts, um, so zero to 80% in four hours. They also supply it, like I said, with a three pin plug. It'll do 80% charge in 12 hours or CCS at 50 kilowatts. Uh, zero to 80% in 35 minutes. There isn't a frunk or a fruit or whatever you want to call it. This is all gubbins under here. One thing it does have, which is really handy, the Mini Electric has a heat pump as standard, um, and obviously that helps to heat the cabin and scavenge heat from the motor and put it into the cabin for you, which is always useful, you know that. Frameless doors, for those who aren't familiar with Mini, that's a Mini thing. And also this sill plate here says Mini Cooper S. It doesn't say electric. Just to remind owners, it is a Mini Cooper S equivalent. Mini do cabins really well because they're owned by BMW and BMW do cabins well. So although it's very familiar, you've got the huge circular display in the center, which they've carried over from the normal minis, uh, which got a digital screen in it. Um, this is all new. This digital semi-floating binnacle in front of you here. On the left-hand side, it shows you uh, how much uh, power you're using. And on the right hand side, like a half moon, it's showing you the status of the battery. And on the bottom part of the left, it'll also show you your regen braking. And there's two stages of regen. So if I just turn it on, foot on the brake, toggle it, it's breathing green at the moment. There's your digi needle. This is quite nice, it sort of looks like it's floating. There's a toggle to the left of that, which is a picture of a mini with two arrows. Toggle it once and it shows that I'm going to have one level of regen, toggle it twice, and apparently Mini says the second toggle is quite aggressive, really for one, one pedal driving, so that'll give you a bit more of a spirited drive. It's 1,365 kilos, it's 135 kilos heavier than a Cooper S, pe piston petrol one, but the weight distribution is better. It's closer to 50-50, they're saying, but they haven't given me a firm figure on that. And it's supposed to feel even more Mini-like, which is, obviously what you want it's a proper driver's little car so the standard mini comes as standard with that they all come with that this this sort of floating digital display dual zone air conditioning uh, cooper s cloth seats uh, this different fascia panel here then you go mid-range which has more comfort like heated seats uh, and driving assistance and that's twenty six thousand four hundred pounds remember it starts at twenty four thousand four hundred and then the top level mini the sort of stylish range 30,400 pounds, that's got panoramic roof, so a glass roof, Harman Kardon audio, head-up display, all the jazz. 
all of the jazz. I'm leaving here glad that the Mini is finally entering into the electrified world, some 12 years after those test mules, two-seater test mules, were, were tried out. It can't come soon enough. Mini knows its audience, the style-conscious people. They want a go-kart feel. Electrifying a Mini will make it even more go-kart-like. The other great thing about it is it's aggressively priced. This is going to be probably 10 grand cheaper than the Honda e. Is it better than the i3? we shall see the i3 is a cracking car but the WLTP versus the price is really good and it's a very good quality car and it was born here here in Cowley 60 years ago back in 1959 they've been making cars here for over 100 years so this is a true British success story I can't wait to drive it frankly because that's when it really comes alive as long as you don't care about having people in the back or having a big boot as usual, thank you so much for watching Fully Charged. If you're already support us via Patreon, thank you very much. If you don't know what Patreon is, have a look at the link. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. If you like this video, obviously, we encourage you to, to like it, because if you don't like it, then we're just sorry. So sorry. <laughs>